Brigadier General Pat Ryder, the Pentagon press secretary, who did mark the occasion and some of the surprises since. Take a look. The one year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, certainly not a day to celebrate, uh, but it is a day to commemorate the bravery and the courage of the Ukrainian people who have fought so valiantly uh, over this last year. And so, as you well know, we're going to continue to support them for as long as it takes. In regard to China's uh, peace plan, uh, we are certainly aware uh, that they have proposed a peace plan. Um, and, and so I don't have any specific comments on that other than to say uh, that in that plan they do highlight uh, that uh, there should be respect for sovereignty of all countries. Uh, and one would hope that they mean it uh, and that as we go forward uh, that they would not put themselves in a position to provide any type of lethal assistance to Russia, which would only prolong this needless and unnecessary conflict. General, uh, President Zelensky has said that he plans to meet with China's leader, Xi Jinping, presumably about this peace overture. Your thoughts? Um, well, again, we know that Russia and China have a relationship. Uh, that's something that we, of course, here at the Department of Defense closely monitor. Uh, so that's no surprise in and of itself. Um, but uh, again, what we're mostly focused on here is ensuring that Ukraine, along with the international community, uh, is working together to ensure that the Ukrainian people have what they need to protect and defend their country. And, and importantly, uh, take back their sovereign territory. You know, General, it was interesting that French and German leaders were telling uh, President Zelensky earlier today that he needs to consider these peace talks. And I'm wondering, the official Ukrainian position has been, as you know, sir, that they don't uh, plan to give up an inch of land uh, in order to accommodate the Russians or sign on to an agreement. So I can't imagine Vladimir Putin leaves Ukraine without something. Uh, do you think it's inevitable, again, to your earlier points, that this is really up to Ukraine to decide, uh, that it should show more flexibility here? Yeah, well, you know, as, a, uh, as an American and uh, with you as a fellow American, I could never imagine anyone telling us uh, when to stop fighting. And I, I can't imagine that we would ever tell Ukraine when to stop fighting. And so at the end of the day, they're going to be the ones that determine uh, when this conflict ends uh, and how and, and when they're ready to go to the negoti negotiating table or when to stop fighting. Uh, and, in the meantime, our focus, again, is going to be on supporting them in their fight to defend their country and take back sovereign territory. And, and I will make a point here, uh, and you've heard others say this, that President Putin could literally end this conflict today if he decided to withdraw Russian forces from Ukrainian territory uh, and end, end the needless suffering. So, uh, but as you say, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. And so we're going to continue to support Ukraine for as long as it takes. Now, we have gotten these mixed messages to your point from China, this 12 point peace plan. At the same time, uh, President Xi Jinping plans to meet up with Vladimir Putin and presumably talk about providing arms, if not lethal weapons, in the fight in Ukraine. What would our response be to that? That obviously ratchets it up at quite a significant level. Yeah, so it's a great question. So we haven't seen uh, China provide lethal aid or assistance to Russia yet. Uh, but importantly, they also have not taken it off the table. And you've heard our senior leaders, to include Secretary Austin, Secretary Blinken, warn China uh, about the potential implications of them doing so, to include extending the needless suffering of Ukrainian citizens in this in this conflict. And so, so again, uh, you know, I would hope that China would live up to its words uh, to respect the sovereignty of all countries uh, and, and not extend uh, the needless suffering of the Ukrainians and provide lethal aid to Russia, which would be intended to kill civilians and essentially extinguish Ukraine as a country. You know, General, you talked about our commitment to Ukraine and I guess this latest tranche of uh, available uh, military goods, the tune of $2 billion, a package just 
sort of being put together right now. But already we got signs uh, that some in Congress are getting leery of pouring good money after what they say is maybe questionable money in this race. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, is preparing to introduce a bill that would audit all monies that go to Ukraine. She's not alone. She has a good deal of support for this. Are you worried? Well, you know, we have enjoyed uh, excellent bipartisan support from the Congress to date when it comes to Ukraine. And as I'm sure you can appreciate, I'm not going to comment on potential or, or pending legislation. I will say that within the Department of Defense, uh, we continue to stay very focused on working with Ukraine, working with our allies and partners to ensure that we're meeting Ukraine's most urgent needs. And I, and I think the other key point here is that beyond being the right thing to do uh, in terms of helping the Ukrainians in their moment of need. Uh, this, this conflict and Russia's actions and the potential implications extend well beyond the borders of Ukraine. If Russia, if countries like Russia, authoritarian regimes are allowed to succeed, it won't stop with Ukraine. Uh, and, and the potential cost associated with uh, loss of lives, with loss of freedoms, uh, the potential impact on the uh, security and international rules-based order that has largely kept the peace, the international peace since World War II, uh, will be in very serious jeopardy. So, so again, we're, we're very focused on helping Ukraine right now, but very cognizant of the broader international security implications to include on our, on our own country uh, as we move ahead. You know, General, it's not surprising given a year into this and impatience grows. I mean, still most Americans favor what we're doing for Ukraine, but not quite by the wide margin um, that American support was looking like almost a year ago. So, so it comes back to another issue that's come up in the face of what's been going on, you know, even in places like East Palestine, where a lot of residents are saying, there's President Biden providing all of this money for Ukraine and we're getting nothing here. Others are saying similarly, how about focusing on Americans and not Ukrainians? I know you've heard this argument many times, sir, but what do you think of that? Well, I obviously, you know, as a as a military member, uh, as a uh, DOD spokesperson, I'm, I'm not going to wade into uh, the political discussions. I will say from a Department of Defense standpoint, our mission and our, and our priority is defending this nation and, and taking uh, taking care of our national security interests. And as I highlighted earlier, you have a nuclear armed country, Russia, that invaded uh, its sovereign democratic neighbor. Uh, and, and the potential implications, not only for European security, uh, but for U.S. security, if Russia were allowed to succeed, uh, are, are stark. Uh, it, send, it would send a message to authoritarian regimes around the world that might makes right uh, and that sovereign borders don't matter. Uh, and so, again, we're going to continue to focus on supporting Ukraine. We're going to continue to focus on defending this nation and our interests around the world. Now. The Chinese, to whom you were referring a little earlier, General, are not at all pleased with our plans to send upwards of 200 troops to Taiwan. Um, they've looked at that along with joint military exercises the United States has had with South Korea uh, as part of a provocative stance on the part of the United States. What do you say to that? Yeah, so a couple things, Neil. So first of all, when it comes to our relationship with China, the Department of Defense, the United States, we don't seek conflict with China. Uh, but at the same time, we're also not going to stand for uh, stepping all over the international rules-based order that I mentioned earlier that's largely kept the peace uh, since World War II. And so when it comes to things like encroachment, coercion, uh, militarization of islands, uh, lack of transparency in terms of why they're operating, where they're operating, uh, you know, that, that's something that we're going to take seriously. Our focus is on preserving a free and open Indo-Pacific region. We've work, been working very closely with our allies and partners to ensure that that region stays peaceful, secure, and stable. And so that's, that's going to continue to be our focus. Uh, and, and we're going to continue to be uh, very, um, you know, verbal about that.
All right, Pentagon Press Secretary Brigadier General Pat Ryder on that. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.